أعزائي المشاهدين كما عودناكم في برنامجكم الأسبوعي برنامج إماراتي أنا أستضيف لكم خيرة من دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة ولهذا الأسبوع نستضيف السيد تريباتي المدير التنفيذي لشركة أوليف جيا في إمارة دبي Good afternoon Mr. Tripathi Good afternoon At the first we would like to know who is Vivek Tripathi so much thanks first of all for giving us the opportunity to talk about the story behind Olive Gaia and myself. I'm Vivek Tripathi, co-founder and CEO of Olive Gaia. Uh, we are a Dubai World Trade, Trade Center established uh, uh, startup here. Um, before starting up Olive Gaia, uh, I have spent two decades in the energy and oil and gas sector mm -hmm. in the region largely working with clients like Saudi Aramco, uh, Adnoc and KOC. Um, if I would put it in just nutshell, what Vivek Tripathi is, it's all about uh, exploring new frontiers of sustainable development all across the world. Uh, that's what I wouldn't sort of sum it up about myself. MashaAllah. And uh, Olive Gia, let us know about the idea. Uh, from your experience, which you got in the market before and you work in many different areas, but in the end, you find your opportunity to start your own business. You have your idea. Let us to talk about it and to know how you start the company or from the name, how you choose the name, sure. uh, because the name is more important to uh, be a brand on the market. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks, thanks for the question. So uh, if I would put it this way, I mean, how this whole story about Olive Gaia and startup uh, uh, grown in my mind that by spending almost close to two decades in the energy sector, mm -hmm. what I realized is that the companies today are at the verge of taking a very strong climate action. And that had been always part of one of the core assignments that had been delivering in my roles before. That's where I picked up this thought that how can a, a company really come up with solutions which can really help businesses take this very critical yet very, very important action on climate action, uh, on climate change aspects. That's where the whole thought of bringing up with Olive Gaia, where we are aiming to really help businesses, governments, uh, tackle with this biggest challenge the mankind has ever faced, which is climate change, mm -hmm. helping them with tools and technologies by which this whole process can be very, very efficiently be managed, but also at the same time uh, have a bigger impact in terms of what a business can drive. Uh, that's basically the core of the whole idea behind Olive Gaia is. Uh, so if I would put it that in the very starting few days of Olive Gaia, uh, after setting up the business here in April 2021, uh, the biggest thought was around uh, sort of creating uh, an awareness about sustainability because as we all understand uh, uh, the world where we live in and especially uh, the countries around in GCC we were primarily very very high on the energy consumption side right. and that's where uh, the biggest challenge was first of all learning the whole aspect of sustainability and that's where we started uh, providing awareness to the businesses and to the government entities we've been engaging with uh, about how how to really look at sustainability in an aspect which is uh, which is which is helpful for the environment but at the same time very very uh, i would say that impactful and economically beneficial way and that's where the bigger motive of olive gaia was to uh, impart that education to the businesses to the governments and have the first step taken and the very first step when I talk about it, when it comes to sustainability, is to acknowledge that that whatever a business is doing would have its impact around the around the around the surrounding right. where it's going right. on, and that's that's what uh, where we had started offering uh, our bespoke consulting support uh, to business and government entities helping them establish first of all their baseline that what sort of carbon emission that they are doing without even knowing about it um, and that's that's where the whole uh, realization comes to picture that if the business is creating such a huge impact what best i can do to first of all minimize that impact and lead towards a direction where i can completely make this whole impact as zero that's what net zero is all about uh, and that's precisely the objective with which olive gaia started providing services uh, yeah I mean, so so i would say that uh, uh, very very blessed and 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 uh, thanks to god that that i landed up in a country like uae which is a, a sort of a land of opportunities which is which is a place which is providing a, a, a sort of a fertile ground for companies and startups like us who can think uh, 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 sort of innovatively and have a vision which can be very well 
acted upon. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I would put it that yes, this this was a great move. How you see the expectation of the people uh, when you introduce uh, your program to them? Right. Um, I guess this is a very, very uh, critical aspect of any business today. Um, in the very first place, and I would say that when uh, we were initially putting up all this idea, the biggest question which the businesses uh, used to ask us is that, why it's so important for me as business when I'm running an X business and I'm, I'm doing everything in the best possible way so that my profitability increases, right? Uh, that is where our uh, suggestion was always to not look at just your bottom line and top line, but rather look at a triple bottom line, which is about your people, planet and uh, the profitability. And that's where the element of this sustainable practices not only going to help environment in a better way, but also can can get you a lot of benefits on your bottom line side in terms of bringing in energy efficiency into the system, in terms of resource optimization that can eventually help cut your cost down at the same time being very, very uh, uh, sort of aware and awake about the sustainable impact of your business uh, to the environment. So that is that is where our uh, push had always been to explain not just the sustainability aspect, but also look at sustainability aspect along with the economic perspective, right. that it brings value to the business. And uh, if you enter a company and uh, you, you start to do for them the study and the program which you are right. the, uh, done uh, with the difference also uh, companies, what the term law or the timeline it will take uh, the process uh, and the process how it's working uh, right. from where you start till where you end. Right. Uh, if I put, put this problem uh, in sort of a fragmented way, I mean, look at it. We talk to various different businesses, different size of businesses, uh, different impact of businesses. Right. And uh, at v the businesses are at very different stages in terms of their whole life cycle, right? They might be very early in the stages where they can implement sustainability, but there are also a set of businesses whom we interact with. They are really already very, very advanced, but they still need some sort of solutions and helping out right. there to bring in more efficiency. So the timeline it takes before we start and go to deliver uh, the set objectives, always depends on uh, at what stage we are entering into the organizations. Mm -hmm. So if I would put it, if everything being done in a, a very uh, conventional consulting manner, it typically takes for a company to have a baseline done probably in a month's time itself. Given the data that is required is provided. Mm -hmm. However, when we talk about setting up a net zero roadmap or setting sustainability strategy or anything around your sustainable procurement policies in the picture or probably looking at even setting up your ESG strategy and ratings aspect. Again, now you can understand that all these subjects are pretty deep in terms of understanding where the business is currently standing in. Right. Keeping those things in mind, the, the assignments or sort of engagement could long for a couple of months and sometimes go up to a year as well where we handhold them through the whole process. Mm -hmm. uh, on the contrary, uh, what we have also realized and we will talk more about it uh, at the later stage is there all set of the uh, leveraging the technology today around AI, about, uh, uh, artificial around intelligence. blockchain, in, uh, like artificial intelligence, uh, everything around IoT is where we started thinking that that these tech and tools can really optimize our uh, this duration of the delivery as such by providing such cutting edge solution. And it just not adds in terms of optimization of the time, but also from the perspective of capacity building within the organization so that they understand now that how can they leverage these tech tools to really deliver all of this task not externally but more more of internalized way like where the that employees are being sort of upskilled to manage all the sustainability aspect within one platform with mm -hmm. the help of tech so that's that's precisely uh, i would put it that how we take tackle this challenge how you see our government support uh, your field also and in UAE and in GCC or in the region? Right. Uh, how they are open it uh, with the idea which you are uh, leave it on a table? Right. Um, I would I would say that we are and I as I mentioned that we are very very fortunate that uh, with the business around sustainability and tech or rather climate tech, 
we are very blessed to have our establishment here in UAE mm-hmm. uh, and also having our target sort of markets around in the GCC including uh, Saudi Arabia, including Oman, Qatar. Uh, and the big reason for this belief is that the governments here are very, very serious. We could see that in COP28 how UAE has led a sort of a global coalition around climate action, around around the cli- around the carbon budgets, uh, around how uh, uh, the adaptation mechanisms around climate change challenge, where the global south is worried about how the fund should be diverted in those directions so that they can come up with the resilience, they can come up with the adaptation plans very very well. That shows the the grit and the commitment of the government, and we could see that how it has really come out in form of uh, in in form of uh, a complete regulation which later this year in 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 the second half of the year we could see the government has already come out with the climate uh, and emission controls regulation which we're going to see that in implementation sometime by h1 next year itself so that shows uh, uh, the speed at which the government works here the efficiency at which the government works here and providing a clear transparency to the business to adapt to the new requirements because business as usual scenario is not going to help. Right. Everybody needs to transition. And that's what government here is really providing all the tech and tools and nurturing companies like us who can help eventually business and governments to move that uh, needle. So that's what I would say that when largely in this region, uh, uh, the governments are very uh, resolved. The governments Governments are supportive. very, very clear, very, very supportive in terms of uh, uh, companies like us, how they can set up, how they can come up with innovative solutions. And the market becomes very, very receptive because the government is providing that conduit, the channel for them to open up gates within the businesses uh, where startups can really help them with the innovative solutions. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's what I would I would put that in action. L- let us know more about your platform, which you was established and always you need IT to update it. Uh, you need a character person who will uh, keep always behind that. Right. Um, if I would put it that, as I was mentioning that, we started the journey at Olive Gaia with more of, uh, uh, I would put it, experts or consultants with the com- with the businesses that we work with, the government entities that we work with. But however, we realize that, that all this process needs a, a good amount of efficiency to be bring- brought right. in. And that's where we started leveraging all our know-how and knowledge and understanding of the real challenges with the businesses and translated all of that into our platform today, which is called Zero by Olive Gaia. Uh, Now, what it does is basically uh, wherever uh, the business is, uh, is, is actually in, in their sustainability journey, they can onboard to the platform, look at specific those functionalities that they would need in that point of time to deliver the objectives that they are setting for themselves. And if I put it a little more in detail, it starts from helping businesses do their baseline, Mm -hmm. uh, meaning to say, uh, doing the complete diagnostic of what my current stats are. It's, It's as good as you going to a medical test and getting your reports and it tells you that what is what is good and bad with you at the moment in your right, body? Right. That's precisely what our tool does. At the very first stage, it helps do businesses do their baselining, do the uh, uh, diagnostic first, and then eventually the tool with the help of AI help matches with the right set of initiatives that the business can take to decarbonize their business. Uh, as we also understand, a good amount of business is also with respect to their supply chain. So there is another community of your vendors and suppliers who need to really align with your target. If you want to achieve your net zero, your vendors and suppliers need to also align with that objective. So the tool also provides multiple engagement opportunities with your suppliers so that you can help green your whole procurement, your whole supply chain. That's one aspect of it. On the other hand, uh, if you look at, uh, as you might have already heard about, uh, there is a big amount of financing and funding which is required to make this transition to greener Mm -hmm. economies. That's where the role of banks comes in very, very crucial, right? Because banks would have that funds which they can provide for companies and businesses to transition. Right. Now, for bank to evaluate 10 different opportunities, our platform provides them tools by which they can rate and find out that which particular project would give them the desired returns, but also in terms of the greener credentials. So that is where our tool helps bank understand their financed emission and also gets them to understand the transition financing opportunity present in front of the bank. So that is where 
the tool with the help of the tech uh, we are providing all of this in a very streamlined simple to understand and simple to work with sort of a platform uh, that actually gets done all this exercise which otherwise would have taken years for any any oh, organization yeah. of any size uh, let us to talk also about the team who work with you and right. how you uh, keep them updated, how you're training them to keep uh, them updated with the markets, with the technology which we are seeing at the last five, four years. Uh, it was very fast and booming uh, sure. for many companies and many people, they have to join that. Right. How you are uh, training your also people to keep them always active? Right. Uh, thanks for this question because without a team, uh, you can't put together a product or a business uh, uh, in the market and keep serving. Uh, that's where our early belief was always to have people who have a drive and passion in them to work in sustainability, to work in an environment of how a startup works in a very, very agile way, right? In a very, uh, I would say that proactive way, looking out for uh, the problem areas existing in the market finding that gap out and working together to come up with a solution which we can take back into the market. Keeping that thought process, what we've done is that between myself and my co-founder Jessica, we had been early on in terms of identifying the right resources at different level of experiences. So if I put it that when it comes to uh, really having uh, internships and early experienced persons, we reach out to multiple universities here in UAE mm -hmm. and we hire summer interns, we hire uh, interns at different phases, help them get first-hand experience of the projects that we are having with the clients itself. This, this gives a different level of confidence, right? And that is where we help them not just understand about the aspects around sustainability and the whole evolving world around sustainability, but also at the same time, help them understand what customers are really looking out for, right? What sort of solution that like we together need to huddle and work on that. On the other hand, with respect to experienced hires, we do understand that the set of clients that we work with are very serious, very large organizations. You need to have people who have the capability to manage the complexity of such projects. So when it comes to technology, I have got my CTO, Kapil, and basically he has got more than two decades of experience developing similar platforms and solutions for, for clients. Uh, and that's where uh, our, our whole tech team is behind him, uh, which is again uh, more than like I would say that 12 guys currently in our full stack development, like the front end part of it, back end part of it, the database, every element of it. Uh, so that's where we are developing the team on the tech. Uh, the third aspect comes in is around the sustainability, because as you can understand that sustainability currently is an evolving stage, right? Every business, every individual looks at it in a different perspective, right? right? When you talk to somebody uh, uh, from oil and gas sector, they talk more about the methane emissions that's happening at the oil site right or probably if you talk about any refining business they would talk about their scope 3 that whatever fuel that they are producing from the refinery is getting burned somewhere what can we do about it but when you talk about any bank they would look at all together in a different way say that oh i have investment in thermal power plant i have investment in x asset y asset i need to really like optimize my portfolio so that i reduce my overall portfolio intense carbon intensity as such so that is where what we have kept as a philosophy internally is that we keep looking out for multiple uh, uh, very, very, I, I would say that very thorough courses around, around the risk management, ESG risk management, sustainability management, carbon emissions, biodiversity, uh, and all various different standards on which today businesses are required to report. Uh, so we keep abreast with the latest set of developments and that only helps for us to go back to businesses and let them, letting them know ahead of any such regulatory requirement coming in picture that how can they really bridge their gap in terms of meeting those requirements when they become sort of a reality in front of them. So that's that's how the overall approach that we take about training and onboarding uh, employees with the company. How was uh, the COP28 uh, value and what add in your project also and how you see the difference from your experience uh, add to the country also? Right. Um, see, from COP28 perspective, this was highly anticipated uh, COP meeting, I would put it. Every year nowadays, every year it is happening for the last few years. Uh, but COP28, people, were having very, very high hopes about. And I would put it that those, those hopes, those expectations were not just met, but beyond expectation. Uh, the big 
anticipation of COP was that countries and the representative countries would huddle together mm -hmm. and would come up with a common joint action plan around what to be done with the carbon emission. As you can see that all of this COP has started since 2015 and 16 post Paris Agreement, right? right. The Paris Agreement has defined uh, a target uh, for all of us globally together collaboratively need to achieve is by 2030 we need to cut our emissions by half uh, what our emissions were in 2009 now think of it it's a mammoth task 2009 emissions where the economy was still growing in various different parts of the world were very low the targets been set so aggressive that even those numbers need to be cut by 2030, 2030 right. now this puts a pressure and that's where Every year you could see that this conference of parties is only to realign ourselves with the, with the reality of the world today, right? Uh, from that perspective, this was one of the big agenda around uh, setting up uh, a sort of a revised timelines or setting up revised targets that what had been achieved and what further needs to be achieved in terms of nationally determined contributions. Uh, the other aspect was more around uh, the budgeting uh, about the transition plans for as I mentioned earlier about the global south which is going to have the biggest impact when it comes to climate change mm -hmm. uh, and they need funds to make that transition happen in reality and that's where COP is, is a place where all these countries together uh, all these dignitaries together fix about a budget that needs to get allocated for that purpose uh, and that's where I would again say that it was a big success from that perspective because uh, we really from COP we could come out with some clear set targets for this adaptation mechanism, the transition mechanism as such. The third big element was all around uh, uh, the industry collaborations and as UAE is one of the biggest uh, uh, the oil producer from that perspective, UAE could bring in consens consensus amongst OPEC countries uh, which are oil producing and exporting countries. Uh, a consensus around what should should be the right target right in terms of cutting the production or probably stabilizing the production and that is where I could see that again UAE played a very very leading role in terms of bringing all these oil companies together and take that strong commitment to action so uh, that's where I would say that it was highly highly successful now if coming back to the point that how COP has helped us of course yes because as you could see that UAE taking a leading role uh, in COP uh, it was was very very obviously expected that the country would also take a strong regulation so when it comes to their is, own emissions right. and that's where we could see that soon after COP the government has come out with very very clear directions around the expected emission regulation control regulation and that is where we could see that the next year this whole law is being implemented so we definitely see that this is a great great positive for us as business as well great uh, what the future plan what the next uh, right, so I guess uh, lots of things, lots of things on the personal side for sure, but from business perspective, I would put it, we have set a target for ourselves that in the next three years, we are targeting to help businesses uh, cut or abate their emissions by 15 million tons. Uh, and also at the same time, when you're talking about uh, abatement, there has to be some investment need to be involved. So we are also trying to target a, 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 a total green financing, sustainable financing around 375 million uh, worth of projects. So that's what the target that we had set. I know this is very ambitious, uh, uh, but of course, yes, that's where uh, we, we are learning from the world leaders. We're learning from the leadership here in UAE that you set targets which are uh, always a stretch and that's what it helps you really achieve and, and exceed uh, the expectations. So that's that's where our bigger objective today is. Inshallah. And uh, if I ask you about uh, the people who believe on your vision and who support you always, can we know these people and what message do you have to them for oh. their belief on your vision? Thank you so much. Uh, um, and I, I would say that it's not just one, but rather a whole lot of list in front of me when I'm, I'm saying that who believed in our vision. Uh, the very first few names I would say that my, my spouse uh, uh, as you can understand that when I'm coming from a very stable uh, sort of a from a job perspective having no stresses around to manage the business uh, the very first confidence that I received was received from my spouse uh, to really help me take this 
very big and bold decision. Uh, uh, so that's definitely uh, a big, big thanks to her. I mean, I can't thank in words for sure. Um, again, my daughter, uh, uh, she had shown a huge amount of trust always to start with this process. And uh, I would put it in some way, the whole name of Olive Gaia had come like uh, this was, she was the inspiration of that. Uh, and that's where basically I could take that first step towards setting up the business. Uh, Beyond the personal family, of course, my 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 friends, uh, my 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 parents out there, they always believed in that uh, that I am setting out a big task for myself, and I need a huge amount of courage and motivation at the back. They always uh, they were the ones I always fall back on them. Uh, of course, from the uh, 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 the whole setting up organization, growing on our vision, uh, I thank my co-founder Jessica. Uh, she had been here in this region for like one and a half decades now. She understands the market very, very well. She understands the the government stands very, very well uh, around sustainability, circular economy, uh, and of course. A big thanks to her just for uh, uh, being the co-founder in the company, believing in the vision that I had and together with, with us where we could make a product like this. I would like to also thank my CTO couple uh, without uh, whose inputs this platform would never been a reality in such short span of time. We uh, took from the base of our designs to a fully functional platform in a flat months, six months period. And that's, that's I would put it, uh, uh, that that's exceptional, exceptional. Uh, so I would definitely thank him and my rest of the team, Abhishek, Oksana, Raghu, uh, uh, Saranya. So these are the core team members uh, whom I would like to definitely thank for being part of our journey. Of course, Neha, he, she leads our marketing and communication and I, I would definitely love to thank all of them for believing in the vision and putting every day their heart and soul into what, what we are trying to achieve. Message today uh, from uh, you and from the team who work with you, from your company to the UAE government and leaders for the support which we are getting here in United Arab Emirates. We are living more than 200 plus national team, but we live sure. together and we support each other and we respect each other. That's our visionary leaders uh, who build this country. Also the safety of this country which help us to live with our family in a safe and peaceful, who also the country support everyone to come to UAE. Our vision leaders, they support all the section in United Arab Emirates from the education, healthcare, technology, which keep the country always on the top. Sure. What's your message to UAE vision leaders and to the UAE government? Um, I would just put it this way. Uh, it was my humble start here in, uh, in Dubai, in UAE, uh, just pre-COVID period. Um, I would like to thank uh, uh, the leadership here uh, at Dubai and Abu Dhabi, larger UAE, for for providing us, first of all, a huge safety net. Uh, that was those were the days which nobody would want to ever recall. But if I if I bleakly remember uh, that 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 we were all really concerned, right? Uh, the start of pandemic, uh, the whole world was in chaos. But one thing I I really that came out to me very clearly. The government here was highly resolved about it. They had every plan and process in place to really tackle to this, this uh, global calamity. And the whole process of coming out from this pandemic situation to where we are in today, this is remarkable. I would just thank them, uh, uh, thank the government here to really having those, those strong processes in place which really helps us to manage not just COVID, but God forbid anything else. If there, there are there are fallback mechanisms which the government has got here, I, I'm I'm highly thankful for that. Uh, apart from it, uh, uh, I do understand that uh, that from a country perspective, uh, we have here, as you mentioned, more than 200 nationalities. I've never never uh, experienced a country or living in any different places in the world where such a harmony coexists. That is what I, I love the most. That is what I, I, I really appreciate about how governments are very, very, uh, uh, I would say that uh, committed to providing a, a, a sort of a freedom of your thought at the same time respecting what your, uh, what your neighbor uh, or, or what your, uh, what, what your, your co-employee or what your friend believes in. So that's, that's, that's where I see that this is this is unparalleled this this and this you would never see anywhere else thank you very much for your time to be with the marathi program we wish for you all the best and more of success inshallah thank you so much.